the best French form because the noble player was... He won run, this son of Troy. He was a good second to Ministerial, who was doing his usual hanging act at Ascot. That ought not to be good enough form, but Ilium sure to be improving. After Ilium comes Great Western, winner last time out of a uh, nursery, but he hadn't been able to hold the candle to Golden Ivory in the Royal Lodge. If he runs well, it'll be a great compliment to Golden Ivory. Number eight, Great Western. Next, a real danger of them all, stable companion of Lear Fan, Alpha Batin, trained by Guy Harwood, R ran unfancied first time but ran very well, and won very easily the next time. That was uh, at Newmarket when he beat Longboat. He could be anything, and is, as I say, stable companion of Lear Fan. Falstaff, not poor dead Falstaff, but trained by Michael Stout, who trained Shergar to run second in this race, ridden by Walter Swinburne, who's in tremendous form. He was close to Rainbow Quest, so he can give us a line to that good two-year-old. Number seven, Falstaff. And there's Beldale Lear, who's lumbered with my selection. His last race was in Ostend, when he won the Grand Criterium d'Internationale in Ostend, beating... Uh, I beg your pardon, beating Blushing Scribe, who most people reckon was a little bit unlucky in running that day, but nevertheless, Beldell Lear did beat him. Before that, he'd run well against Raft and Elegant Air, so he can give us a fascinating line to those two. Raft, of course, a stable companion of Lear Fan, and Elegant Air, who won the Horace Hill uh, at Newbury the day before yesterday. That's top two-year-old form, and uh, Beldell Lear is in it. But is he good enough to beat one of the best two-year-olds in France. That's uh, Alpha Batim, who's just been bought by Mr. Abdullah, just uh, playing up with Greville Starkey in the stalls there. You can see he's giving Greville a rather anxious time. Alpha Batim rearing up, very nasty that must be, for any jockey. But best of luck to all of them and to Graham Good. The trip is a mile, the William Hill Futurity. Just waiting for Bounty Hawk to go in. Falstaff, 9 to 1 from 8 to 1. The favourites, uh, second from the right, are grey in a bright red cap. A little bit slowly away, Mendez. But they're settling down, running through the first furlong. And the jockeys jockeying for position with Patrizzo leading from Ilium, Lake Valentina. And then comes Belle de Olier. But Patrizzo in the lead from Lake Valentina. Mendez running quite freely in third place. Ilium is fourth. Then behind these comes Great Western. And uh, just in behind the leaders comes Falstaff. But they're quite closely grouped with Lake Valentina leading from Patrizzo next to the rails. Then behind these, Mendez, Cachas Moussen now got that one settled. Ilium is the horse with the noseband. Alpha Batim is towards the outside. So towards the outside is uh, Bounty Hawk just coming around the bend there in the blinkers. And Beldale Lear coming down to the halfway stage in this William Hill Futurity with Lake Valentina in the lead from Ilium in second place, then Alpha Batum, Beldeo Lear. Lester Pigott switched the uh, Great Western on the outside. Mendez just in behind them, carrying his head a little bit high with just uh, three and a half furlongs to go. Lake Valentina, Ilium, Alpha Batum, Falstaff going well in behind the leaders. The favourite Mendez with plenty to do at this stage, but Cashas Moosen just looks around there to see where Bounty Hawk and Northern Maiden is struggling. They've got two, just over two to go. Ilium now being sent about his work from Lake Valentina here comes Falstaff and here on the outside comes Mendes coming with a smooth looking run a furlong and a half to go in the William Hill Futurity and it's Ilium in the lead from Lake Valentina Alpha Batum Mendes really fairly eating up the ground on the outside inside the final furlong and it's Alpha Batum and Mendes and Ilium from Falstaff Ilium next to the rail Mendes on the stand side but Alpha Batum just has it Alpha Batum sticking his neck out going to win it at the line it's going to be Alpha Batum Alpha Batum the winner a photo for second between Mendes and Ilium then came Falstaff and Lake Valentina with Patrizzo and Great Western, Belldale, Lear, a disappointment. Last of all was Bounty Hawk. And so the result of this William Hill Futurity, it's a win for number two, Alpha Batum, owned by Mr. Khalid Abdullah, trained at Pulbra by Guy Harwood, ridden by Greville Starkey, 96 of the season for him. Officially, it's a photograph for second place between number nine, Ilium and Paul Cook, and number 11, Mendes and Cash Asmussen. Well, Guy Harwood must be rubbing his hands in expectation of some tremendous... Uh, income to come into the yard next year because Alpha Batum, he had 10 entered in this race. Alpha Batum was his choice, but along with Raft and a lot of the other horses, Lear Fan to name, and Roussillon, those three top-class horses, now been joined in Guy Harwood stable by Alpha Batum, who really stretched close home. Let's review the closing stages and John. 
Yes, what a tremendous coup for Mr. Abdullah, who bought Alpha Batim recently since his last race. And what a coup for Guy Harwood, too, who has Lear, Fan and Raft back home, and who knows how many other good two-year-olds. But at this stage, it was Ilium who'd taken it off Lake Valentina. And uh, Grevel Starkey is only just beginning to get Alpha Batim into top gear. And here comes the favorite, Mendez. And as you'll see, Mendez looks like winning comfortably. I think he then hangs. He probably, that hard race he had in the criterium, begins to tell on him. Here he comes looking at that stage like winning quite comfortably. But you'll see that Cash Asmussen has to put down the whip in his right hand in a moment. He's done it now and pulls it through in his left hand because Mendez put his head high carries his head high anyway didn't really seem all that keen to go past alpha bait him and even when cash gets his whip through into his left hand he can't find any more so alpha bait him sticks out his head runs on past ilium on the far side and holds the french favorite fair and square alpha bait him now definitely on top ilium on the far side mendes on this side desperately close between them for second place but no doubt whatever about the winner alpha bait him for england Here's the head on now. Now watch Mendez in the red cap on the left. I suspect that you'll see him begin to hang a little bit inwards toward, towards Alpha Batim. There he goes. He's not hanging all that much. You can see by the lines on the thing. But Cash gets his whip through like lightning and straightens Mendez up. And now if you look at the lines on the turf, mind you, nobody says they're straight, but he's come back away from Alpha Batim. There's absolutely no danger of interference. So Alpha Batim takes control, and the only remaining question is whether Mendez or Ilium gets second place. But I think England can take this as a thoroughly encouraging result. We've certainly got some two-year-olds better than the French at this moment. On the shoulders, 9-2 to two returned Alpha Batum. It was backed in from 5-1. to one. I got some prices for the classics next year on Alpha Batum. I'll go to the second place first. Mendez is second, the favourite. Mendez is second at 11-8 to eight favourite. And Ilium is third at 12-1. to one. So the result is Alpha Batum, Mendez and Ilium. Now, prices for on the 2,000 guineas next year. Hills go 20 to 1 Alpha Batum, 7 to 1 favourite Lear Fan, and 8 to 1 El Grand Seigneur. Derby betting, Essel's put Alpha Batum in at 20 to 1. Ward Hill go 8 to 1 Guy Harwood stable. So there's some confusion, 25 to 1 I've seen with Corals for the Derby. They're putting in Alpha Batum. But once again, these French horses, Mendez, a lot of people, pundits wouldn't back them. It was the offices made it 11 to 8 favourite. They remember all the French failures, don't they? Calamoon, Mississippi, and Northern Baby, Tukri. They come over here, they fail, the pundits are not keen on them. Alpha Batum, not a lot of confidence in the ring that this is a classic horse. All the feeling is that Guy Harwood's got far better at home. Things like Raft and, of course, my own special, Lear Fan. And I should uh, imagine Prince Khalid Abdullah isn't uh, feeling too displeased with himself either because he bought this fellow privately after he'd won at Newmarket and whatever he paid for him has uh, not been disclosed. But whatever it is, it's uh, certainly looking a pretty useful investment. And of course, don't forget that he also owns Raft. And with Jeremy Tree, he has a very uh, top-class two-year-old Rainbow Quest who ran second to El Grand Senor in the Dewhurst. So Prince uh, Abdullah certainly... Uh, has something to go to war with next year, as too does Guy Harwood. Mendes, I thought, was perhaps a little bit unlucky. He was a little bit slowly away, then ran a little bit freely early. He was then settled quite well by Cash, who got him in behind the leaders. And then, of course, he had to switch to the wide outside to deliver his challenge. So he may have had uh, just a couple of races to get into a challenging position anyway. I'm not too, too disappointed by Mendes, who was only beaten half a length at the line with a head between second and third. Official distances, half a length between first and second, ahead between second and third. Well, the final flat race meeting of the season, except, uh, of course, in a fortnight's time, we'll be coming here. The absolute close of the season has uh, brought on William Hill Futurity Day an enormous crowd reveling in the autumn sunshine and uh, seeing another very good horse in the form of Alpha Batum stretch his neck out and win comfortably at 92. Here now, the starting prices from John Tyrrell. Pass number two, Alpha Batum, 92. Second number 11, Mendes, the 11 to 8 favorite. And third number nine, Ilium, a 12 to 1, nine round. Newton Abbott, three o'clock. First number 12, High Darlin, four to one favorite. 
Second, number 10, Emily Ethel at 8 to 1. And third, number 24, Wynn Green Hill at 11 to 1. 16 round. From Newbury, St. Simon Stakes, won by number 3, Jupiter Island at 3 to 1. Second, number 14, So True at 20 to 1. And third, number 1, Fally Offer at 9 to 1. Castle Rising was the 2 to 1 favourite, 11 round. And here's the final total on this afternoon's ITB4 to a 10 pence stake, 38 pounds and 50 pence. Cash Asmussen says that there were no excuses, or he has no excuse for Mendez. It looked to us as though he pulled rather hard, but Cash says that when he came there to win, he just wasn't quite good enough. I do think, to do him justice, he had had a very hard race at Longchamp the other day. It may be that that began to tell. Nevertheless, he wasn't good enough, and that is, from a chauvinistic English point of view, a thoroughly good sign. A marvellous sign for Prince Khaled Abdullah, who of course also owns Rainbow Quest, a very close second in the William Hill Dewhurst, and a wonderful moment for Guy Harwood. He's not here, actually, Guy, but uh, he, of course, trains Lear Fan, Raft, and many other good two-year-olds as well. Not many of them, I shouldn't think, as good as Alpha Batim, who, according to his brother-in-law, Jeff Lawson, is known in the yard as Red Rum. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Well, mainly because he's so well-grown. He looks, as Jeff says, like a three-year-old already. He'll certainly be desperately difficult to beat next year. His sire, an American horse called Verbatim, I must say I'd never heard of him myself, but he has got the winners of 27 stakes races in America. And I should think that Alpha Batim will certainly add to that total. But I'm afraid Beldale Lear didn't run very well. But nevertheless, I very much hope that you've enjoyed a glorious sunny afternoon with us at Doncaster. Some pretty exciting racing and a definite signpost to the future Alpha Batim. Goodbye from us at Doncaster and back to Dickie in the studio. And our thanks to you, John, also to the race reader, Graeme Good, and we mustn't forget John McCrillick. While news of goals are now beginning to seep through in the first division, Alan Sunderland has scored for Arsenal in the seventh minute with a superb left foot shot from a pass by Kenny Sanson. That's at home to Nottingham Forest. Uh, we've just heard that Luton have taken the lead at home to Southampton through a goal by Trevor Aylott, his first game of a goal of the season in the 14th minute. In the second division, Peter Shirtliff has opened the scoring for Sheffield Wednesday in the eighth minute uh, against Brighton at Brighton. The leaders taking the lead against Brighton, of course, who parted company with their manager, Jimmy Melia, during the week. Also in the second division, a goal in the 12th second by Alan Roberts for Middlesbrough at Manchester City. Manchester City third in the table at the moment. And one goal up in the Premier Division that we know of, that's Hibbs at home to Dundee. A goal by Arthur Duncan giving Hibernian the lead there. Right, more live action to come in a little more than a minute. We'll have motorcycling and we'll be going live to Brands Hatch for the MCN Masters Championship final round. That's in a couple of minutes. The Bosch Variable Speed Jigsaw has five speeds, a powerful motor, and a perfectly balanced action for a smoother, truer cut through wood. Find it in the